Did you know that if it wasn't for the Turks, the German economic miracle may never have happened? You see, in 1526, the Ottomans defeated the Hungarians at the Battle of Mohawks, killing the King of Hungary and leaving the country divided. The Ottomans took one part of the country while Austria, under the rule of the Germanic Habsburg family, took advantage of the situation and annexed another. The Ottomans and the Austrian Habsburgs now shared a border with each other and for the next 265 years, they fought a series of wars for the future of Central and Eastern Europe and for the European continent as a whole. The struggle between the two great empires continued for centuries, but by the late 1700s, it was clear that both empires were on a decline and there were now new threats emerging in the region. On one side, the Ottomans had become the sick men of Europe. It had been the longest lasting empire in Muslim history, 36 sultans and over 600 years of rule. But the empire had become inefficient and corruption plagued the government. And now the industrial revolution in Western Europe was leaving the Ottoman Empire behind. The Austrians, on the other hand, faced problems of their own. Another Germanic kingdom was now on the rise and were threatening the Austrian Habsburgs for supremacy. Conflict between Prussia and Austria was now in full effect and the rivalry between the two lasted well into the 1800s. And during that time, the Ottomans, seeing the Prussians as potential allies against their old rival, signed trading agreements and the Turks and the Germans were encouraged to travel to each other's lands for trade and to learn from one another. Soon a Turkish community in Berlin began developing while Prussian Germans were bringing Ottoman culture and designs back to Prussia. This is where buildings like the Yenidze Tobacco Factory in Dresden and the steam engine house in Potsdam got their designs. The Germans even built and funded a railway from Berlin to Baghdad, a city which was under the control of the Ottomans at the time. Eventually, the Prussians managed to unite the rest of the German kingdoms under one government, leaving Austria to itself. And soon enough, the German Empire was born. Eventually, the Austrians decided to make an alliance with the German Empire, and together with Italy, the Triple Alliance was created. In response, Russia, France, and Britain later formed their own military alliance called the Triple Entente. The Ottomans at the time, however, remained neutral, choosing instead to focus on internal issues such as centralizing authority in an attempt to prevent the fragile empire from falling apart. But all that would suddenly change when in 1914, one of the most consequential events in history took place. An event that would shock the world and drag the great European powers into one of the deadliest and most violent conflicts the world had ever seen. On June 28, the Archduke of Austria, Franz Ferdinand, was visiting the city of Sarajevo in Bosnia, a province that was once part of the Ottoman Empire, but that was now ruled by the Austrians. But at the same time, ultra-nationalist groups from the neighboring kingdom of Serbia also had their eyes on Bosnia, and they wanted to send a message to the Austrians. So when the Serbians learned that the Austrian Archduke would be in town, they plotted to assassinate him. As the Archduke drove through town in his motorcade, one of the assassins threw a grenade at him and a huge explosion erupted on the scene. And as the smoke from the grenade cleared out, it became clear that the Archduke was still alive and his car was untouched. The grenade somehow had missed. The assassin was then arrested and the Archduke, shaken and disturbed, decided to continue on with his visit anyway. After learning of his partner's failed attempt, one of the other assassins set up an ambush along another road. And in one of the strangest twists in history, the Archduke had a change of plans and his driver was forced to turn the car around to take another path. And just as he was putting it in reverse, the car stalled right in front of that assassin. The assassin then ran up to him, stepped on the footboard of the car and shot the Archduke at point blank range. Immediately, Europe fell into an uproar. Austria sent an ultimatum to Serbia and soon declared war. Germany then declared its full support of Austria, taking its side. Russia then mobilized its military in support of Serbia, setting off alarm bells in Germany and Austria. France then began mobilization in support of Russia. Then Germany, seeing Russia and France as a threat, declared war on both of them. Germany then invaded Belgium in order to get to France. The British then joined Belgium as they had an alliance with each other. Italy then declared itself neutral before switching sides and joining France, Britain, and Russia in the fight. World War I had arrived. And while all this was happening, the Ottoman Empire was on its last legs, trying to keep itself together. At first, the Ottomans tried to remain neutral, but they knew that the other nations were just looking for any excuse to invade and cause chaos in the empire. They needed support in order to maintain their territory. 
At first, they looked towards Britain, France, and Russia for support, but they were hesitant to make commitments as all three of them had wanted to invade different parts of the Ottoman Empire. The Ottomans then turned to the Germans who promised them military support and to help them get back some of their territory that they had lost to Russia during the last war. It now became clear that the Germans were the best choice the Ottomans had at retaining their empire, and so they too joined the war. However, things didn't go as planned. The Germans and the Ottomans eventually lost the war and both empires were shattered. The German Empire now became the Weimar Republic and had its economy gutted and destroyed. The Ottoman Empire, on the other hand, was now faced with a coalition of Western nations that were picking it apart and taking territories for themselves. Eventually, the Republic of Turkey managed to survive colonization in 1923 winning the Turkish War of Independence. Throughout this time, the two nations remained friends and a wave of Germans even emigrated to Turkey in 1933 to escape the rise of the Nazis. In 1941, the two countries then signed the German-Turkish Treaty of Friendship, an agreement of non-aggression, while World War II was now underway. Turkey remained neutral throughout most of the war, though eventually taking sides briefly against the Nazi regime in 1945. And by the end of the war, Germany was now split in two, and Western Germany was looking to rebuild. Six years of war had destroyed an entire generation of German men, and when the Berlin Wall was later built, it restricted Germans from immigrating from the east. Germany had a huge shortage of labor and was now in crisis. At first, they turned to Italy and Greece and Spain, but none of these countries had enough manpower for what Germany needed. And so, with nowhere else to turn, West Germany reached out to their old allies asking the Turks for help. In 1961, West Germany signed an agreement with Turkey officially inviting the Turkish people to emigrate to their country, though they were initially only allowed to stay for two years. German companies then desperate for Turkish workers fought against the government, lobbying politicians to remove this time limit. And not only was the time limit removed, but Turks were even later allowed to bring their families with them. With the help from the Turks, the German economic miracle was now fully underway. Industrial production and GDP soared, and living standards increased. Employment rates climbed, wages got better, factories were constructed, houses were erected, infrastructure was replaced, entire cities were rebuilt. And soon West Germany had transformed from a war-ravaged economy into one of the strongest and most stable in the world. The rest of Europe began to look at Germany and say, I want that too. Germany then became a founding member of the EU and a model on how to rebuild economies. And perhaps none of this would have happened if it weren't for the backbone of production, the men and women who worked tirelessly to make it all happen. Perhaps the German economic miracle wouldn't have been if it weren't for the Turks. Like and subscribe for more Muslim Facts. For decades, the German government didn't allow dual citizenship for Turkish nationals. Today, some two-thirds of adults with Turkish roots in Germany don't have a German passport and therefore can't vote. Understandably, people who've grown up with these two cultures have often had to deal with conflicting feelings about their own identity. In Germany, they might be dismissed as Kanaken, a derogatory term for foreigners. But in Turkey, they might be called Almanji, a derogatory term for Turks who have supposedly been Germanized. 